Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today I'm going to talk about making fractals within animation nodes. Before I start, I want to mention that I have made a tutorial talking about the advanced feature within loop nodes, and it's critical to work with fractal in this tutorial. Although you don't need that tutorial to follow this one, I think that tutorial is very valuable, thus you may want to watch that after this tutorial also. So let's start. So here we're in Blender, and uh, I'm not going to create any geometry yet. Let's directly distribute a circles and I take a 3D viewer to look at what we have created. So this is a circle. If you have an uh, increasing amount of vertices, then you get a circle. But if you decrease the amount, it just becomes more kind of polygon. So here we have a triangle. And one critical node within this entire process is called a replicate matrix. And we can use another distribute matrices or actually use it itself. Then we have uh, circles. But uh, to be aware, uh, actually I'm going just going to use another circle. So that if we increase the radius of the first one, then it basically duplicates the circles on the top of each matrices uh, on the first uh, circle. So now we have actually nine, vertices, uh, nine matrices being replicated on this original large triangle. And to make kind of, to keep replicating this kind of instances, what do we, we actually need to, uh, what do we actually do is to keep this entire process manually. So basically in a system like a shader nodes and the geometry nodes, which does not support recursive function yet, you have to do this all just kind of manually. It's not necessarily a preferable uh, ways of doing, but it does work. And it's basically telling you, oh, you have a functional limitation in these systems. However, in animation nodes, we do have a loop nodes and we have recursive function available. In that case, you can do that uh, automatically without all this kind of manual labor. Previously, we know that the entire core part of the recursion, the loop function that we are working with, is the replicate matrix because this is the only node, uh, only node that we are replicating three times in order to achieve our desired result. So we replicate, uh, basically duplicate this uh, replicate matrix, and within parameter section, I'm gonna hit this plus icon and I take a matrix list and plug the transformation back to new parameter so that it create a matrix list without hitting this plus icon. Uh, also, it uh, creates a name called the transformations. So once we've done that, select this loop inputs, create a invoke sub programs, and we no longer need this replicated matrix because all these kind of function will be replaced. And we, I'm going to use the same distributed matrices within two instead of within two sockets instead of two distributed matrices in each of the sockets because we are going to change the scale later. So here let's just take the radius. Next thing is in this new generator, I'm going to hit this plus icon, take the matrix list, put the matrix into the matrix. So let's look at our loop node functions. Uh, now we do not see anything because iteration is zero. If I increase to one, so now we have all this kind of grid that has been replicated. So three times three means nine. So we have nine matrices here. But if I increase the iterations, nothing happens. But we actually have the things. Uh, it's just that they are overlapping to each other because the loop is running independent. So you are keep generating the same stuff at the same locations all the times. So that's why you do not see anything new. What we do, or what we are going to do, is to make a recursive function. To make everything a recursive function, we just uh, hit U. And in the advanced settings, I'm going to take the matrix list, take a reassign. So now we have a node being created, and I'm going to reassign the matrices. So now nothing happens. But as soon as if we increase the iteration, we have all this kind of thing being generated. 
and here let's we can use this matrix list as a position that we're instancing the object to make everything clear i'm just going to take a spline from points take the vectors into so you can use another new distributed matrices to generate whatever geometry you can even use match but here i'm just going to use the same one and replicate the spline out. Finally, we are going to curve object output. So now we are actually generating these triangles. So this is actually almost finished. This is already a recursive functions that you can add some more functionality on the top of this setup, but it's almost finished. One thing that I want to ensure you is that we're generating triangle of the same size. So here it looks like we have tiny triangles, but it's just a, a kind of a illusion because in reality it's this size of a triangle being replicated throughout. The size is the same. It's just uh, when your triangle cuts each other, it feels like, oh, they're, they're small triangles. So what I want to generate is I want to make uh, within, from iteration to iteration, the size of the triangle should be smaller. There are generally two ways to achieve what we want. One is to use index. The index always starts from zero, which will cause problem. So I'd rather to use this new iterator. So let's take a float list. And immediately we lose everything in the viewports. We will fix that later. But before that, we are going to use the offset matrices to change the scale. And take a vector from value. And I want to remind you the offset matrices must go into the first row of our matrix list, not the transformations. This comes down to the foundation of understanding this replicated matrix nodes. What's being replicated is on the top, not the button. So it goes to our most initial settings in which we are having these triangles. So take a look at what we are actually having. So if you increase this radius, of the second row and uh, let's in order to distinguish them i'm going to put the amount of circle increase so you realize what's actually being replicated is the first is the top matrices that has four matrices together so you can increase more so you can see the difference so if we're changing the second read so if i'm going to change the side the size of what we're actually replicating, like triangle or polygons, we always need to change the radius or size of the top one, not the second one. That's why I'm putting offset matrices on the first one. And here it will be but so here let's just recover what we actually have. So I'm going to take a float range. Take the amount too small. Because we were working with fractals, if any times you're increasing the amount your machine might be very stressful you might it might freeze so be really careful always start from the low number and we still do not get anything back because we started with zero so let's crank up that to one they immediately will get everything back to the stack to zero then we just recover the things as as if we are not using this float range just to remind you because we have issue if we start at zero that's why i'm not using this index method so if I take the step decrease and immediately we get everything back or everything as we would we want and you can increase the iteration just to be aware of the execution time if I increase the amount to 60 it finally reaches the 100 milliseconds it may not be desirable and I'm not going to hit the amount of 7 so let's just keep at 4 I think it's good enough I think this is already kind of good pattern and you can change these matrices and you get idea. And it looks kind of very cool. You can actually play with parameters. Just to show you what if you put the offset matrices in the lower portion. Then it will just give you very very bad results.
it does not look right obviously and you just decrease the size so now you know the, actually the problem it just does not look right I cannot really describe how wrong it looks but it just does not look beautiful at all so have to do everything correctly let's delete the matrix C's use the correct ways to do with stuff also be aware if you your step is too negative then you get an inverted triangle at some point okay. and you can also use the stop version so that to uh, make sure how things looks actually this also looks kind of very interesting so play around with this entire whole thing I hope this is not a very complicated node tree because this is just oh, this is almost everything one thing I want to mention at last before I call the end of this tutorial is you don't have to work with these distributed matrices you can even work with a actual polygons so what there are two ways that you can potentially work is one is to work to duplicate the mesh so let's transform mesh and I'm going to use the object to mesh dot select our cubes take the mesh matrices in mesh object output and we can also use the mesh for all these kind of metrics so let's translation matrix basically to convert all these kind of vertex locations into the matrix and be aware with the amount that we're having otherwise so now we actually have 3d all these kind of things and increase the iteration so we have kind of 3d cube there's many different ways you can play around with these entire things and if I take a wireframe this is a single mesh if I take a wireframe 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 you know how it looks it looks kind of weird probably this is how it looks take the 0 0.1 0 0.01 yeah whatever there's many different ways that you can play around just a, this is just a really an example so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye-bye.